Hello and welcome to the Global Church Project. I'm Graham Hill. Ali Abu Awad is a Palestinian peace activist and advocate for religious, ethnic and political reconciliation and non-violence. He's a founder of a Palestinian national movement promoting non-violence to achieve a non-violent solution to the conflict. His story has been featured in at least 12 documentaries, including two award-winning films, Encounterpoint and Forbidden Childhood. Ali Abu Awad is currently finishing his memoir, which is an account of his experiences, as well as his strategy and vision for a Palestinian future. Ali Abu Awad, welcome to the Global Church Project. Can you tell us something about your experiences as a child and a teenager that shaped your understanding of peace and reconciliation? Well, when I was a child, I, I, I didn't really felt peace in, 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 in any level of my life. Mm. I always felt that I'm controlled. My movement, even my physical movement is controlled. My dreams, my hopes. Mm. Mm. I, I wanted to taste mm. what does it mean to live in peace. But you, when you live under a military occupation, mm. uh, there is like a huge gap between you and your humanity. Mm. And uh, that's, that's what is non-violent struggle is about, mm. is to close that gap and to find yourself. I was born to a very political family with a very heavy background. Uh, my family are refugees. My mother mm. was one of the leaders of PLO. Our home was under attack always by the Israeli military mm. forces. And, you know, I, I saw her in the front of my eyes, was beaten. Mm. So you don't, you don't think peacefully, you don't feel peace. Mm. And I have never considered myself, whether in, when I was a child or when I grow up, as a terrorist or as even mm. a violent person. Mm. But this is what you, what you experience when you live under these conditions. And sometimes people ask me why Palestinians educate their kids to hate. I'm not sure if you live in such environment, you need a specific curriculum for hatred. Mm. Mm. It does make the job for you. Mm. So. Mm. And your family were uh, refugees at one point as well, I think, is that right? Yeah, they were refugees yeah. from 1948. Yeah. You know, when Israel was created, mm. uh, it was the independence for Israelis, mm. but it was our catastrophe, the Nakba. Mm. People lost their homes, and even until today, I have many sisters and brothers mm. who live in the diaspora and are not able to come to visit. Mm. And that's why mm. you need to deal with all of that every day. Mm. Mm. And... Uh, you know, my my childhood, in a way, was forbidden. Mm. It's like I was angry on my parents, on God, on humanity, because uh, I deserve to live normally, like any other child. So, but being a son of my mother is about feeling responsible because she spent years in prison where we had to take care of ourselves, mm. to cook and clean and do the jobs. And it unites us. Mm. It put us in a very unique relationship. I mean, me and my sisters and brothers. Mm. What, what um, was the time when you decided that you would move from, from, from hatred to wanting to embrace peace? What was, the, what was the story of how that happened for you? Well, actually, the first encounter with nonviolence was in mm. prison because I spent years in prison mm. with my mother and I wanted to meet her. Uh, and as I refused, so we decided to go for a hunger strike. A hunger strike for 17 days where we were starving, struggling just to see each other. Mm. And after we succeed, to meet, uh, I start learning about this huge force inside me, 
this huge energy. And I discovered that I was blinded to the best weapon of me, which is my humanity. Mm. And I was led by anger. I cannot even say hatred. You know, to hate someone, you have to get to know him. Mm. I'm not sure that I knew that Israelis or Jewish people mm. to hate them. But I have experienced their, their behavior against me. So it was mostly anger more than hatred. Mm. And uh, after I was released by Oslo Peace Initiative, I really wanted to grow up normally and start building my country, my society, hoping that we will have an independent state and we will have peace with Israel. But the process has collapsed and in 2000, I was badly wounded by a settler. And while I was in the hospital, my brother was very violently murdered by Israeli soldiers. So again, I have to deal with a price that it's just huge. And I was struggling between revenge and I, I cannot say even reconciliation between revenge and humanity. I mean, revenge and giving up my right to revenge. I was struggling and I remember when I, when I, when I was feeling like that, there was a sentence by Malcolm X where he said, justice is just us because revenge is, is a just act for victims toward justice. But what is justice? The only justice for me is to have my brother back. That's justice. But he's never gonna come back. So does that mean there is no justice? Especially the killer of my brother was still around. No one put him to justice. And it's hard. It's really hard. So in violence, you people easy can target each other. But in non-violence, you have to fight yourself, not your enemy, first of all. You have to be able to see, to see the humanity on you first, not on anyone else. And I think I was ready. I was tired of, of feeling a victim in a way. Because it's just tiring you. And there was a minute that I was totally transformed when I met an Israeli bereaved parents who have lost someone in the conflict. I couldn't even imagine that Jewish people have tears or they have feelings or they can be victims. And finally, I, I, I saw them. And when I say I saw them, it's not just watching them or meeting them. I saw them, I experience who they are. Mm. That's why I, I was able to find a partner and to give up this feeling of victimhood together with the victims to stand for solution. Mm. But you know, this is not easy because my life has not become easier. Actually, it's much easier to participate in violence. But non-violence is responsibility in the first place. So then I have to take responsibility about myself, my people, and the enemies. Can you tell us something about Roots, the organization you're a part of? Yeah. I will tell you about Taghir first. Mm. Taghir in English is change. Mm. Is the Palestinian National Nonviolence Movement. I realized that the Palestinian community has to adopt nonviolence mm. and to have nonviolence as an identity, not just as a tactic or a strategy to get rid of the mm. occupation. But it's also 
to build our identity based in our humanity and our national rights. So I have created Taghir with many, many other Palestinian community leaders to create this culture of non-violence for us to resist the occupation non-violently, but also to develop ourselves and our life based on, 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 on our belief of not just of our national rights, but on our belief on ourselves. We believe on ourselves that we will be able to stand for solution and solve our problems instead of complaining. Because we always raise a question, do we want to be right or do we want to succeed? Mm. Being right is comfortable, but there is no success. So that's the year we do many, many things. And Roots for me is, is the madness. Roots is a very crazy local initiative between Palestinians and Israelis who, who live in the West Bank. In general, you know, Palestinians don't speak to settlers. Even Israelis, big part of them don't speak to settlers. But I think the problem is within the right wing. Mm. You don't make peace with your friends and you don't dialogue with the people who agree with you. I mean, you chat with others, mm. but dialogue is to create a secure place for people even to argue. Mm. But is to be able also to take yourself from your comfortable seat and to sit on the other side seat and experience what he feel and mm. the other thing is I have as a Palestinian I have no problem with Judaism I don't have a problem with Jewish people my problem is with their occupation I'm not racist I love others I respect mm. others but I want others to respect my dignity and live with me in harmony. If we pray for God, I think we should not criticize, sacrifice each other or ourselves. If Jewish people have a place in this land, I think they are not the only nation here and they are not the only people here. Mm -hmm. So I start talking to settlers and removing this stereotype because you know we can feel good with ourselves and disengage settlers mm -hmm. forever but uh, but settlers are growing settlements are growing in few years palestinians mm -hmm. will have nothing here i cannot keep this watching by considering myself as a solution maker talking to the leftist they are good, they are my friends, but the Israeli peace camp has to take responsibility among mm. each other mm. and not to throw it to Palestinian to deal with settlers. Mm. Settlements is an Israeli, Israeli problem. And we Palestinian wants to help the Israeli society to take mm. responsibility. On the other hand, if there is a legitimate historical ideological right for Jewish people to live in this land because this is their truth and this is what they feel. This legitimate truth should not be on the expense of other nations because we have a historical legitimate right to the two parts of the land. So how do we create peace without recognition of that from each other. We are afraid to recognize each other. Because acting as victims, it brings us to be in a place where my rights are in harmony if you are, your rights are not there. Israelis feel secure as long as Palestinians are controlled. Palestinians feel that they are in their way for independent as long as they create a threat on Israelis. And that's why we become victims of each other and mm. ourselves. 
I want to change all of that. So if if this message come out from settlements, mm. even a small part of settlers, mm. this will break through these walls because if these people can accept the Palestinian truth here, so everyone can. How does peacemaking begin with seeing the humanity in the other person? Because it seems to me that sometimes, you know, conflicts and divisions are often about not really seeing the other person as fully human. So how do we get better at recognizing the humanity in others and then working towards peace? Well, that's a good question. Mm. But I think we don't start from recognizing each other humanity. Mm. That's the beginning is to see our humanity and to yeah. be able to trust our humanity mm. that this humanity is enough to transform the other and to practice our values in a human mm. way. On the other hand, you know, when you have an, an enemy, all what you expect from him is bad behaviors because it doesn't register in your mind that he's going to be okay with you or he's mm. going to treat you well. But the way that you respond to that will transform him. It's like in non-violence, you become a mirror of your enemy. Mm. You don't just show him your humanity. You help him to see his humanity. Mm. And that's why I say in my book, I'm writing a book called Painful Hope. I say, your humanity is my weapon. It's not just my humanity that's mm. my weapon. But I have to be able. Mm. And there's a hard job to do. Mm. It's really hard job to do. Mm. Because you have to be aware of the anger, of the fear, of the stereotype that others have toward you. What are some of the things that you're covering in your new book, uh, Painful Hope? My Painful Hope is, 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 is about strategizing hope you know to have hope is nice but hope is not enough and hope alone is painful because easily you can be hopeless mm. hope cannot protect your dream your dream has to be strategized with a non-violent strategy to protect this hope and to make it grow and practice so when Martin Luther King said, I have a dream, he didn't say I'm a dreamer. He said, I have a dream. Having a dream is having a plan. Mm. And that's what my book includes. It includes my story. It includes mm. the other side. And it includes criticism also in, on peacemakers especially when retired politicians and generals from the army becoming Mandela's just after they retired, mm. corrupted peace movements. Mm. The international community, how mm. do they roll? Our, how do they see their engagement in our conflict? Mm. Because we are used by others. Both sides mm. are used. And finally, it's all about responsibility. So even if you don't care about the other side, mm. practicing peace is serving your identity. Mm. You are not doing a favor to anyone. What's your dream for this land and its peoples? My dream is to remove the blindness that we have on mm. our hearts and minds and to be able to see each other in a normal way. And to live in a life where human being rights are in harmony of mm. their life. That's my dream. What role do you think that um, religions and faith has to play in, in creating peace today? I think we, we upset God a lot mm. because we didn't respect mm. what he has created, mm. which is religion and us. Religion in this conflict has been used deeply in political plans. Mm. As I told you, my problem is not with Judaism. The occupation is the ugly 
political face of Judaism. And that's why we need to create a place for Jewish people to feel secure, to take responsibility and end this crime against the Palestinians. On the other hand, Islam today need leaders. Islam, I'm a Muslim, proud to be a Muslim, and Islam has the best values of humanity. But Muslims are lazy and divided and politicized. That's why Islam is paying the price. Islam need a new Islamic leadership to create better future for Muslims, but also to to send a message to the Western world, to the Christian and every other religion that Islam is not a place of crimes and fanatics. Our responsibility as Muslims is to raise the best values of reconciliation in Islam. Mm. And this is, if we want to serve God, this is a duty. Ali Abu Awad, thank you for joining us for the Global Church Project. Thank you. The Global Church Project is located at www.theglobalchurchproject.com. On our website, you'll find a wide range of interviews and resources for colleges, universities and churches. I look forward to your company next time. From me, goodbye.